Hi, I'm Joseph. Uh, I'm a rising junior at Princeton University. I'm Bill. I'm going to be a sophomore at Yale. Physics, one. Cal. Cal. Lang. Cal and Lang, yeah, Cal and Lang. So we did math counts. Okay. And then we did AMC, <laughs> we which also is like did AMC, math yeah. Olympiad. And, and Amy as well. <laughs> yeah. right? like, I challenged three AP tests in ninth grade. Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part two of the two-part videos that I'm doing with my friends Joseph and Bill. In part one, we talked about how they got into the Ivy League as CS majors, going over their stats and extracurriculars, and just how they got into their respective schools, Princeton and Yale. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how exactly it's like as a student at these schools studying computer science. So extracurriculars, clubs, course schedules, and just like overall student life and culture. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is extracurriculars. Bill, do you wanna start off and tell us about what extracurriculars you're involved in at Yale? All right, yeah, so uh, this past year mostly was uh, all remote. So basically, uh, we got to go on campus in the fall, but everything was all online. So I sort of took a more like conservative approach, I guess, to um, picking the clubs. So I did a couple main ones. So one of them was part of like the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association, so YUAA. Um, and you might think it's like rockets and stuff, but uh, the project that I did was like the ornithopter, so building an ornithopter. Ornithopter is like a robotic sort of bird thing, and I kind of wanted to do that because I did um, like model rocketry in high school, so I kind of wanted to do some more like engineering building stuff, and um, that was cool. We basically worked on like the project throughout the whole year, um, and we had like meetings on Zoom and stuff like that, and we coordinated um, like sending the parts and stuff like that. I also did like the Putnam seminar, so. For those that don't know, the Putnam is sort of like the college version of like math competitions. It's really hard, um, but I just attended like weekly like problem seminars where we just like go together and do like math problems. Um, That's cool. Yeah, that, yeah, and math club part yeah, two. Exactly, and there's a few other stuff, but um, my involvement was like less in those. Yeah. Joseph. Uh, well, even in high school, I wasn't really much of a club person, um, which isn't necessarily a great thing. Um, <laughs> and it was kind of the same in college. Uh, I did get a semester and a half on campus before, you know, COVID happened and we all went home. Um, and I wasn't really in any clubs, uh, but I'm planning on changing that next semester, so. Yeah. Um, how about your course schedule? So for those of you who don't know, Ivy Leagues, they're like a liberal arts like group of colleges. So every school has a liberal arts focused curriculum. Yeah. So for Yale, um, we actually don't have specific course requirements, but instead um, we have distributional requirements, which is basically like there's a few categories um, like science, uh, quantitative reasoning and like writing, humanities, social science, stuff like that. And for Yale, we need to take two courses in each of those throughout like our all, our four years there so it's um like a lot of, there's different strategies for going about it i mean you could like do it early or like wait till the end and like rush your major requirements distributional requirements not like specific course requirements we have like a lot of freedom for how we want to do it so um like this last spring i took it was a first year seminar which is like just like any other class but just for first years and um it was both like a writing and science requirement because it was uh like Extra, uh, exploring extraterrestrial life and then it was like a writing sort of um, based sort of thing mm. but uh, alternatively obviously you could just take like an English class to satisfy that it's kind of similar uh, like we have distributions as well we have a four category requirement I believe there are six categories oh, um, interesting. not really sure though um, and we have to take seven humanities courses total um, and those seven need to span at least four categories. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think it's, like when I first heard about that requirement, like I'm not much of a humanities person, so I was mm. like, oh mm. man, I can't believe I have to do this. <laughs> um, but then uh, like the courses that I've taken are pretty interesting. Like I took a music course. Um, I took, I've taken three philosophy courses already, wow. um, which were all pretty interesting. And both of your schools are on the semester system, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome. So finally, we're going to talk about student life. So 
this I guess includes what you do like socially with your friends like what types of majors are your friends I know at some schools like the CS majors tend to be grouped together you know like the English majors and just like things like that might tend to be like more sort of clicky um, would you say that your friend group is like more diverse and if so like how do you meet those people and like what are your friend groups like how do you meet those friends at college mm. well honestly uh this past school year because because of covid it was all online classes so i think a large part of meeting new people was kind of just like through classes bah, yeah through yeah. classes and not that much it's all online the people that i met a lot of like i think it was just coincidence but like my roommate was majors? like math and econ oh. or something so i, I maybe like just like coincidence or whatever yeah. but um i would say it's probably not like that as much because um at yale um i think also princeton you don't you don't get into the school for a specific major like mm -hmm. for public schools i think a lot of them you get in for like a like a school or like a department yeah. specifically but for yale um you get into the school and you, you actually declare your major um like at the end of sophomore year for yale mm -hmm. so there's a lot of diversity there and a lot of room to explore so yeah yeah um same yes like as bill said <laughs> um so like within most of my friends uh i met through um our orientation activities or because they lived in the same hall that i did uh in my freshman year and um because that's kind of like the assignments were kind of random i believe uh they are pretty diverse i suppose in like majors um but like commsci is kind of popular so yeah. <laughs> a lot of people i know are doing commsci yes. as for student life like what we do um i mean we would just kind of go around campus and find study spots mm -hmm. and, and just do homework or like <laughs> chill yeah, or like yeah. um go get food or whatever mm -hmm. Probably, uh, yeah, I think that's a large part of yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like in the city, so it's pretty exciting. Um, there's a lot of like motorcycles, like a group oh, of motorcycle oh. people that just go around with like the <laughs> <laughs> so it's super loud. Yeah. But okay. um, that's sort of like the environment. It's it's really active. Mm. Um, Princeton's is in the town of Princeton. It's a it's a college town. Um, it, it's. Well, I personally thought it was small, but apparently it's not that small, but I don't know. I haven't really explored all of it because um, I spent most of my time on campus. It feels kind of like a bubble. Like, I think there is like this term of like the Princeton bubble. Uh, Princeton bubble. Yeah. Finally, we're going to talk about majors and minors that you might be doing outside of computer science. So, Bill? Yeah, so actually, um, I actually applied uh, and got into Yale as applied math. But um, I'm thinking more about doing like math and CS because sort of the f foundations, I'm, I'm more interested in that sort of stuff mm. now. Um, but actually at Yale, there's a few different options I'm considering because we have to declare at the end of sophomore year, so that's coming up. But um, there's actually a few joint majors at Yale, so you could choose between like math and CS, uh, econ and CS, econ and math, and like so like those three are in like a triangle sort of thing that you could joint double major or joint major it's not double major because it's one major and also physics you could do like physics and math and probably uh. physics and some other stuff as well um but yeah so right now i'm considering the math and cs joint major so basically um instead of double majoring there's less requirements because but less requirements than than if you did like double major. There's also certificates um, at Yale, so you could do like a data science. There's other stuff you could look it up, um, but those generally require like a few classes um, that you take, and you okay. get a certificate. Awesome. How about you, Joseph, at Princeton? Uh, well, at Princeton, it's we we can only have one major. Uh, kind of unfortunate. Um, I think it's because they want you to like not like split up your focus or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah like the majors are called concentrations so i guess that's pretty evident <laughs> um yeah uh for me personally i haven't been working towards like any minors specifically but uh maybe i'll end up qualifying maybe yeah, awesome we'll okay and finally thank you so much joseph and bill for coming on and sharing all this information with um 
all of you guys. We're gonna end today with a quick game involving perfumes from our partner for this video, Dossier. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys different scents and you're gonna guess if they're cheap or expensive perfume. So, so designer or dupe, basically. So earlier today, we went to Cerrito Small and we sprayed some perfume samples of real designer scents. And today I also have with me two of Dossier's perfumes. This one is Fruity Jasmine and this one is Floral aldehydes. <laughs> Floral aldehyde. <laughs> These two perfumes are dupes of Chanel Number no. Five and Dior's um, perfume as well, like their signature perfume. And they're supposed to smell exactly like the designer perfumes, but at a fraction of the cost. So, if you like the Dossier perfumes, you can use my code Ten Anita for ten percent off. And I have the link down below in the description if you want to purchase. So here is Floral aldehydes. I'm gonna spray. And then we have Fruity Jasmine. Oh wow, it smells next. so good. Oh yeah, you, oh, you can smell something? You can smell it. <laughs> no, I can't smell it. You shouldn't it. be able to smell it yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. So this is the first scent. Um, you guys are both gonna take a sniff and tell me if you think it's designer or dupe. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Why the face? Um, well, I don't know wow. anything about perfumes. That smells so good, though. Yeah, so sweet. remember that there are four designer perfumes and two dupes hidden in here. Okay. So what do you think it is, Joseph? Um, probably designer. Designer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> designer. First one, right? So. Okay. You guys are correct. It was designer. Uh huh. Yay. Okay. You shouldn't tell us though, because if they. Oh right. Because you're taking it out without replacement. And so, oh, right, <laughs> right, probability, right. probability, yeah. Uh, we deduce that. Okay. Yes. So that was just, that was designer. <laughs> Here's this one. Okay. Tell me if you want to sniff it again. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, designer. Designer, designer. The, the quality is there. Mm -hmm. um, definitely there. Quality's there. Yeah, so okay. does it's, it smell different from the first one? Yeah, it yes, it does. does. Smell, like this one uh -huh. was a more... Sour smell. <laughs> okay. Well, not sour right. smell. More like, like sharp or like. Mm, like we got a fragrance expert it, here. <laughs> it reaches deeper into your nose. This is actually a dupe. Oh, oh that's what I said. That I I identified it as a dupe. That's that's what well, I said the first time. I, I, you can go back in the video and I, check. Yeah. If you don't believe me. Nah. But yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So this was a floral aldehydes. You guys. Wow. I'm glad you thought it was a designer though, because it does smell very similar and that's the intention. Okay. Stop! Wow. Don't do that face! <laughs> that one was good. That smelled like a jasmine sort of thing. That's one of my favorite scents. It did smell nice. What do you think? Nice. Designer. 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 <laughs> Are you just yes. gonna guess everything is designer? Well, I mean, I don't know uh, the difference. Okay, okay. That How smells good, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> You're right, it was designer. This is actually Marc Jacobs Daisy, which is like my favorite scent. It's amazing. Yes. Next one. Interesting. Yeah, it smells like Marc. That's what it smells like. Marc just smells like that. Dude. Um. <clears throat> mm. This one's more like vanilla musky, right? Yeah, whatever that means. I'll even let you guys have a hint and like look at these the notes on the dossier perfumes if you think it matches. I don't I don't know how that's gonna oh, help me. So it's like different pitches of the smell, right? Like like the top of your nose. Sure. And like, their smell as strong as the other ones, but it's probably still designer. Okay, what about <laughs> you, Joseph? Much. Uh, dude. Okay, that was designer. Oh uh, I said designer. Okay. So, um, go back in the video. out of these two, one of them is designer, one of them is dupe. Okay, so I'm gonna have you smell both of them and you tell me which one is designer, which one is dupe. Oh my okay. god. Let me make sure I know which one is which. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Let me clean my nose. Yeah, no, <laughs> cleanse the nose palette. <laughs> oh, fresh air. You know, you're supposed to actually smell coffee beans. It's supposed to sort of cleanse your nose palette. Like, really? Fresh your, yeah, Very that's why they have coffee beans there. Okay, oh. next. They smell exactly the same. They smell exactly the same? They should? They're, Wait, I, one of them is designer dupe again? of the actual one. Can I smell the other one? It's supposed to be Chanel um, number five, I think. Wow. Oh. Or, or the Dior. Okay, the one in your right hand. 
This one? Yes, I, I think that's the dupe. You think this is the dupe? Yes. Which one did I smell first? You smelled this one first. Yeah. Uh, they, they smell the same, but definitely this one's stronger. So one's that's stronger. true. Yeah. Uh, Final guesses. The one in your right hand is the dupe. Okay. And the other one's the designer. Nah, no, it's the other. This one definitely the dupe. But, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. They both okay. smell, like, really similar, though. They do. They yeah. smell, they smell almost exactly the same. Okay, so, dun 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 dun, drum roll, please. You're shaking the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so the winner is, this one's the dupe. That's what I said. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they do smell like basically the same. They do. Yeah. Yeah, these were both Fruity Jasmine, which is Dior. That was um, Jasmine? Dior. Mm hmm Interesting. But Interesting. yeah, so these perfumes are really nice. I actually have two that I've been using like on and off, like or like I alternate using like between every day. Um, they're really, really um, fine mist, and I love the magnetic top. That's like my favorite feature. It snaps right on. Want to try? It's very satisfying. Sure. <laughs> Whee! If you are interested in giving Dossier perfumes a try, I highly recommend. Use the link in the description to check out and purchase. I will. Yeah. Definitely. Life Mother Mother's experience. Day gifts. So that is it for the video today. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and um, leave a comment down below telling me what you want to see in a next video. Um, yeah, so that's it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.